Type 2 diabetes is a reversible disease. The American Diabetes Association in 2021 changed. It used to think of type 2 diabetes as a chronic and progressive disease. That is, once you had the disease, you had it for life and there's nothing you could do about it. But in 2021, it set out criteria for remission, which means that it is possible to put this disease into reverse. And the better news is that it can be done naturally without surgery and without medications. And I'm going to share with you the top five keys to putting type 2 diabetes into remission. And it's coming right up. Number one behavior change. Understand that type 2 diabetes is not simply a genetic disease. There is a genetic component, but there's also a large component of the diet and the lifestyle. And whenever you're talking about these sort of lifestyle changes, there's a whole field of psychology that is uh, to do with behavior change. One of the most important topics is habits. Habits are very important. There's a uh, saying that first you make your habits, then your habits make you. If you are in the habit, for example, of waking up every morning and exercising, well, it's simple for you to keep doing so because you've always done so. Just like brushing your teeth. You don't have to think about it. You don't think, oh, today I should really brush my teeth. It's the same with any type of diet or lifestyle or behavior change. You have to build it into a habit. And there's a number of keys, making uh, small changes, making changes that are easily accessible to you, making sure that you sort of reward yourself as you go. But remember, if you build it into a habit, all of a sudden you're making it automatic. So these healthy changes, for example, cutting down desserts. That simply becomes a habit. You no longer have to use willpower for it and therefore you're going to reap the benefits day after day after day. And that's why it's so important for you to build these healthy habits. You have to identify what you want to do and then build it. There are other keys to behavior change as well. And for example, journaling could be a very important thing to do. You could build that into a habit. But journaling is a, simply a way to write down what you're thinking, write down what you're doing, and that's a way to increase mindfulness. You're putting uh, conscious attention on those things that are going to matter. And by writing it down, it forces you to confront what it is. Number two, coaching and communities. This goes along with behavior change, but it's so important that I put it as a second key. We all think about, uh, you know, applying willpower for behavior change, but that's actually a very small part of it. Think about um, peer pressure. We all know that when your friends are all doing something, then you're going to be more likely to do it. And it's the same with any behavior. If you want to um, go skiing, then you find yourself skiing friends and all of a sudden you're going skiing all the time. If you want to go bicycling, well, then you go join a bicycling club and all of a sudden you're doing it, you know, every weekend. But it's very hard to do that if you do it by yourself because it's less enjoyable and you don't have the support of the whole community. That's why it's so important to find people who are willing to support you. We do that at thefastingmethod.com. And coaching is sort of a next level uh, thing to do because not only are you getting the support of your peers in the community, but you're getting an expert who's going to keep you accountable for doing what you want to do. And it's no different, for example, than people who get a personal trainer for fitness. Nobody blames them. Nobody says, well, you, you know, really shouldn't have needed it. People get executive coaches. There are business coaches. There are CEO coaches. There are coaches for everything. And there's a reason that this entire field exists because it works. And your health is so important. Why wouldn't you get a coach uh, and a community to help you do it? Key number three, biofeedback. This is uh, simply a fancy term to say you need to get information on what is happening in your body so you can make the appropriate changes. 
Luckily, there's some new technology that's able to help you for type 2 diabetes. There's a continuous glucose monitor, which instead of having to poke your finger to get uh, a reading for your blood glucose, you can put a sensor in that stays in for 10 days to 2 weeks, and you can check your blood glucose 50 times a day, 100 times a day if you want. The reason it's important is that now, by checking all the time, you can actually pinpoint exactly what time your blood glucose goes up, exactly what foods will make it go up, and what uh, behaviors might make it go down. If you find that certain foods are spiking your blood glucose really high, then you can eliminate those foods. And then you can see how you're doing on your changed diet. Is your blood glucose getting better? If you didn't have this information, you would not be able to see it. For example, if you thought that, hey, eating a bowl of cherries every night is fine, it's no problem, it's fruit. You don't have to guess anymore, you can just check. And if you check and see that your blood glucose is indeed spiking up because of that bowl of fruit you're having every night, now you can make a change and you can get feedback on how it's going to get better. If you find, for example, that going for a walk after dinner every night really keeps your glucose from going up, you can make that change. If you find that taking vinegar, for example, with your carbohydrates really prevents that blood glucose from going up, then you can make that change. If you find it doesn't make a difference, well, then you don't have to do that. And that's biofeedback. Key number four, low carbohydrate diets. Just remember that type 2 diabetes is a disease where your body has too much glucose. And carbohydrates, such as starches, are chemically chains of glucose. So if you're eating, for example, a bowl of rice, your body is going to break down that rice into its component glucose, and your blood glucose is going to spike very high. There's a simple solution for that. Stop putting so much glucose in your body. Your, your body already is full of glucose, so when you're eating more glucose it's, and your body can't store any more of it, it's simply going to spill out into the blood. So instead, you can eat less carbohydrates, eat proteins and fats. If you eat an egg, for example, it's full of protein, it's full of fat, but there's very little glucose. So even though there are calories there, there's energy, there's vitamins, there's minerals, there's no glucose. So stop putting the glucose in your body. Look for the sources of sugar in your diet and stop putting it in your body because your body has too much. Think of it this way. Your body is sort of has a way to store glucose. It's just like if you go to the grocery store, you have a way to store those groceries by putting it into your fridge. What if your fridge is now so full that you cannot put any more in and all the food is just spilling out onto the floor? Would you keep going to the grocery store? No. You want to use up some of those groceries in your refrigerator. Key number five, intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is simply a period of time that you don't eat. When you don't eat, your body still needs energy. Your heart, your brain, your lungs, your kidneys, they don't just stop working. And in order to continue, they need energy. So the most easily accessible energy is the blood glucose. So when you're not eating, your body's just going to burn some of the glucose. So as it's burning the glucose, burning the glucose, it's going to shrink down the stored glucose in your body so that the next time you eat, your body can now take it in. It's no different than you cooking some of the food in that refrigerator. You're just using it up. In this case, your, the fasting is going to give your body the time it needs to use up that stored glucose so that when you eat again and when you take uh, glucose, it's not going to spill out into the blood. So those are the five keys to reversing type 2 diabetes naturally. Behavior change. Number two, coaching in communities. Number three, biofeedback. Number four, low carbohydrate diets. And number five, intermittent fasting. Thanks for watching everybody. Hope you learned something. See you next week.